Yo, JD here, Tyrell Livers, and as you can see, we're on F1 2020 once again, yeah. and we are back on Silverstone. A lot of people say we've done Silverstone recently, but we do have it in this weekend's GP, and we are in the black Mercedes, the updated livery, which I have to say, playing on this game, it, it looks absolutely awesome. It looks like an absolute beast, this car, so... Last video I did was at China. Got a lot of feedback banker. on that video, and that's very quick. Some people might be offended when they get feedback on that, but for me, I'm always really, really grateful if it's good, bad, because you can never ever have perfect races. Yeah, I need to know and that. that's what I want to showcase to people. I want to showcase everything, some of my best moments to some of my worst moments, and I definitely need to start putting some of my own advice and the feedback I get into action and that's what I was really trying to focus on when coming into this race because this race was actually after uh, the China race so just aiming to be a lot more relaxed more patient and just enjoy myself more and really just try and think about the long game rather than try and react in the heat of the moment and um, that's what I'm really really go well that's what I'm trying to really put forward into the future so here you can see the first lap we did was a 24-0 banker um, and that was really really good but this lobby is probably the fastest Bad. lobby that I've had so far and that's a bit unexpected because uh, some of the guys in here I haven't really raced with many of these guys but the times are insanely competitive Do now I'm a, a 24-0 and I'm in P5 at the moment so I think people are just really starting to not catch up but just really get the hang of this game um, quite clearly because uh, these times are very very fast 24-0 P5 is pretty insane so coming to here did the purple first sector and I'm up I'm about a tenth up on this time so far going to this final final chicane really trying to hook it on the inside but it's quite easy to get in the validation now when doing that and going across the line it's a 23.9 only 0 0.06 six thousandths behind Sparks good, F1 who did a, an excellent lap time so GG to him that was really really impressive but you can see the top five is within a tenth of a second that is yeah that is absolutely nuts here but uh, luckily on this game so far I've consistently qualified pretty high uh, for the most of the time when I've been on the soft tyre I think I've qualified top three I think every time I've done it so that's a good thing to have when going to league racing, but nothing counts until the final result. So we've got five lights here, wait for them to go out, and let's see if I get a good start in this brand new Mercedes, and I get a not an, not an incredible start. Sparks gets a much better start as me, as we've got LVA Brown, which used to be P1R Brown, which I only just discovered after this race. He makes a good start, but we've actually maintained our position, and this is all we need to do. Not like China, where we try and take everything to our own hands in lap one. We're going to be patient this really time. Up in this game and no, really do a move when I need to do a move. That, that's really my thinking and kind of have more of an endurance mindset. But not to say you definitely need to be aggressive at times, but just knowing when to be aggressive is definitely something that I need to work on. So come into here now, maintain the position and pretty much a perfect start to this race. But skipping on to the end of lap two, start of lap three, like we have in our recent races, I think the race pace is even stronger than the qualifying pace. And we're starting to put Sparks under a little bit of pressure now. And you know, Dirty Air is quite, for me anyway, is quite significant in this game. So I didn't really want to stay behind him because I didn't want to run the risk of being in Dirty Air because Dirty Air, I think it's a lot easier to make mistakes and stuff as well. So I wanted to get past him and kind of take control of this race and that's exactly what i've done here so yeah i just felt much more comfortable leading and the thing is as well it's it, i feel in this game that it's quite easy to stay with people but i think it's very hard to you know run really really close behind someone um so i think it's easy to stay within that five tenths to a second mark with the DRS and the overtake button that you have because you're able to save more behind people and stuff. But I think in terms of you wanting to actually overtake someone and really get up behind their gearbox, 
I think getting within that three tenths is very, very difficult because of the dirty air. So I want to get out of dirty air. Although I wasn't expecting to pull away, I was quite confident that I would be able to maintain this position. And again, I don't really like being in dirty air behind people because I just find the cars are quite unpredictable. As we get our first invalidation off the race, just showing how sensitive uh, the track limits are around here. I don't think all the wheels were off the track, but yeah, it's very, very... Uh, the track limits, I think, are a little bit worse than they are in real life, but at least they seem to be relatively consistent. And you can see, this is what I mean. Now, I think when we were in the lead, we were just quite comfortable. Although he's staying with me and we've got a little train behind me, he wasn't able to get close. But you can see his teammate, Crisito, has actually gone into the pits now. And that's very, very early to go into the pits. But I do know that the mediums can last to the end of the race itself. So it's going to be interesting to see. Going across again, I don't think anyone else is going to go into the pits this time. Well, a few people. I think the guy in fifth or sixth or something has gone to the pits. But Sparks, Brown... Felipe and Pancakes, we've all continued. My teammates got into the pits. And I was starting to think, okay, now this is probably going to be a good lap to actually pit because Crisito pitted about a couple laps before and I knew he'd probably get a good chance of an undercut. But so far, you can see like, we're managing our fuel pretty well, managing our ERS, actually using a little bit of overtake because I really didn't want him to overtake me. But you can see at the end of this first sector he actually goes down the inside so not interested in us not losing time he just wants to go for <laughs> the lead um which you know again he's fully fully entitled to do but i don't know if he's aware that his teammate did pit two laps before so this is only costing us time i don't think he would have gained any time even if he got passed by doing that but you can see wasn't going mental or anything i just tried to just keep calm and just keep focus um always just keep focus at all times and using a lot of my ers now because i'll be able to get a, quite a bit of that ers back when i go into the pits and you can see again no real threat going down this back straight but i'm going to actually pit this lap and you can see a very a very aggressive pit entry so using 100 meter boards of reference and i thought that i was going to speed then I was about to <laughs> about to cry then because I thought that was way too fast. But Ooh, I was going, um, yeah, we've pretty much maximised that pit entry, which is a good thing. Then. And now it'll be interesting to see where Crisito, because he has set the fastest up of the race, as you did see as we were battling with Sparks. Who I have to say is, is driving a really, really good race. I haven't really raced him that much, but um, his pace seems to be very, very strong. So we're going to the pits now. Jam Pancakes has actually continued as well in the Haas. So it'll be interesting to see how much time you're getting in him. But you'll be able to see now, if you look at the minimap, Cosito, that McLaren is coming past now, and he has got ahead. So the undercut was very, very powerful. But the good thing we have is that we're not that far behind, and we have the fresher tyres. But I, I am really starting to think fresher tyres is not really that significant in this game. I think last couple of games it was a lot more significant than it was on this so you can see he had a wide back 1.4 second gap but we've almost closed in on that already because we have a lot of ERS at our disposal and that kind of makes me think that he's probably used a lot of his ERS to try and undercut us so you no know, we've, we've already we're already back in a second within no we're getting five temps or six temps in about a sector and a half so that leads me to think that he probably used a lot of that to try and um, get some distance between us but now we're back right up behind him and we've gotten the DRS and this means I don't have to use overtake and that means I could just sit behind just for a couple of laps managed to restock my ERS and just maintain my fuel and um, go look at the driver behind see if he's got any penalties or not but I don't think he has any penalties so I'm in a McLaren sandwich at the moment which we're probably not going to see with the Mercedes in real life but I have to say again, this black Mercedes looks so, so nice in this game. I really, really love how it looks here. And you can see here, no, was a good go for that move. Didn't use overtake. And again, I'm just trying to be patient. I'm just trying to make sure I get the move done when I know I'm going to get it done. I don't need to do it right now um, because I'm still trying to save a little bit of my ERS, conserve my fuel. So when I do overtake him, 
I can try and attempt to break his DRS. And um, that's what I'm going to try and do. Or if I can't, then just have enough ERS to defend with towards the end of the race. We're coming to here, we're right, right up behind him. But going to his left hander, his teammate goes down his side, pushes me, boxes me out wide. And I'm really, really desperate to keep this position now. Getting the DRS and the overtake. And it's going to be a drag race to the end of this sector one. I'm trying to force him, so I have to leave room down the inside. He gets the move done. Going to the right hand, he turns very, very what early. You and you can hear me get a little bit move. frustrated, as I usually would. But I need to I need to stay ahead of him. Like I said, there was three man DRS thing. I go back down the inside, going into the old time one, like Bottas and Hamilton did. I think last season they did this trying to just about keep the car on the track he comes back up the track behind me and i really was not expecting that i didn't know he was even going down my inside until he made the contact of me uh going into left hander and as i said before if you're the third car in this drs train it's going to be very very hard oh, for McLaren you to overtake here. anyone so that's why i was so desperate to make sure i was the car in the middle because then i'll be able to attack Rosito because he has no drs but if i'm the third car now i'm gonna have you know, Sparks would have DRS and we're on the same lap ties. It's going to be very, very difficult to overtake him. So I knew I have to stay ahead of him. If I want to win this race, I have to stay ahead of him. So I was thinking now, you know, we've used quite a bit of DRS in that little mini battle that we had, which was quite fun. And now I thought to myself, like the first stint, I feel I have a lot more pace than Crescito. So I think if I get the opportunity, I'm going to try and put a car between... And myself and Sparks because I think he's my main contender for this race here so this is what we're going to do like we did I think in the first in a pretty easy overtake on the McLaren and now we've gone back into the net lead of this race because I think the guys ahead of us haven't pitted yet and I'm going to see now if I can try to pull away always got a very good exit I notice in this race I was very very strong on traction which is a good thing if you want to defend your position um particularly that down the straights but the oh McLaren oh are now are. going side by side so there's no guys, team orders or anything here They're making a little bit of contact I think and that sparks now gone in behind me so the strategy of having the car between myself and him has gone out the window now and that was all about doing what I did in the first sin feeling like I, I felt like I had a bit more pace than them you can see he's not particularly close he's only about six steps behind and now I'm coming up on Jules Fist who I was racing in the social race the guy in the Ferrari who lost his battery in the last lap unfortunately we're coming up behind him and I thought this I, I want to get another car between myself and Sparks so we're going to go down the inside a very committed move no half measures I've made up my mind and I was going to overtake him but unfortunately he has gone into the pits I was really hoping that he would stay out on another lap because then that might have given me a window of opportunity to get yeah, out of the second of Sparks but as you can see he is back in the yeah, DRS zone and I don't really have that much ERS to get away from him but coming through here now you'll be able to see the gap is about five tenths of a second and you can see by the minimap because I don't really trust the Delta time he's not very close at all and this was oh, yeah, 30 degrees in my this room. is what we were we're doing each time we seem to be you know we can't pull away because the DRS is quite powerful and just the overtake is powerful but I just don't think he can get close enough. I don't think he's in a position, unless I make a make, unless I make a really big mistake. Sorry, I don't think there's going to be any opportunity for him to actually overtake me. So pace moves very, very strong. But you can see by the mini map that he has had a lag spike, and you can see Crescito is now back in P2, and unfortunately Sparks has had a lag spike, which has put him behind his teammates. So now this is the opportunity that I need to try and claim take a full two hands on this race I'm going to use the overtake like. because the laps in between this I was really just trying to save my ERS as much as I possibly could until I felt there was a time I could use it to get out the DRS zone and uh, Cosito he's got a few lap older tires than me but someone else to pay attention to is my championship rival from last season Mr. Jam Pancakes because he pitted a couple laps later than me I think so he's got the freshest tyres out of everyone and he's got very very strong pace in fact as well still on no the controller idea. but the it's very very impressive the way he's actually driving around here so I'm almost almost out of that one second window and if I can do that 
I, I felt really confident that I had the pace to just he keep just pulling away. I just had a slight bit more pace than the people behind me, but he's still sticking in that nine tenths. It's so hard to break out of it. It is so, so hard. Going to Sasha Kane now, I'm just trying to drive as hard as I can and probably goes a little bit of overtake coming off this corner, which I do a little bit. Setting the fastest lap I've done, my personal best of this race. Exceed the gap is one second, but now it is just, just dipped under a second again. And here's the detection zone. So I think he's going to have DRS again. But if I could get a good exit off here, then I think we have a very good chance of actually breaking this. And you can see we've got some really good traction. Go use the overtake button once again. And now it's over 1.1 seconds, almost 1.2 seconds. And this is my chance now. This is the lap that I need to really, really push. But the thing is, how much ERS do I want to use? Because if Pancakes gets past, since he's been behind these guys, right. he probably has been able to save, I would imagine, quite a lot of ERS. So, you can see the gap is about 1.3 seconds now. So as soon as we got out of that DRS zone, we pulled away, started to pull away pretty quickly. Viper has retired from the session. But coming onto the hangar straight, Let's see, the, see the gap keeps on going up each time, 1.3, almost 1.4, it is 1.4 now. And let's see the minimap behind, oh. I think Pancakes is going to have a good opportunity. You can see the dots merging into one and Pancakes has actually got past into P2. And again, I'm quite low in ERS, so I'm on like 20% ERS, so I'm quite vulnerable at the moment. If he's got any pace, he needs to show it now because if he does, the pancakes then he could really start actually putting me under some pressure. As I asked Jeff to see if he has got a penalty behind, but I think you're about to hear that he doesn't have a penalty uh, whatsoever. So he's driven a very, very solid race here. And now it's all about showing that race pace that I keep talking about. Let's see if I actually have it because he has the fresher tyres. He, I don't know if he has more ERS, but he potentially does because I don't have much ERS at all but you can see as the laps go on the gap is really kind of staying the same he's not really gaining or anything at all so we're being very very consistent and i was just trying to avoid using my ers because even if he got back in the drs zone if i had more than 50 percent ers for last lap it's going to be impossible really for him to actually overtake me at this moment in time because see the gap has now gone up to 1.5 seconds so just confirming that i feel we did have a little bit more pace then people behind and now i'm going to activate scenario seven for this last lap itself i've saved my fuel i've saved my ers and you'll be able to see the gap at the start of this lap was about 1.5 seconds or something like that and now i'm going to use the overtake because as i said there's no point really trying to use overtake every lap because if we got within a second like in the last lap then if i use overtake it's, it's going to be really really hard for him to Unless I make a really big mistake here. And I think you're about to hear me say, activate scenario seven here. Scenario seven. Which is exactly what I'm doing. You can just see the time that is going up and up. And this is probably, you no, know, Zandvoort was a very good race that I drove, but this is probably the most collected race that I've driven so far. I just drove very, very calmly. I didn't lose my head. I felt I was quite patient. And this is how I need to drive every single time when I do a league race so, because you know the reality is that you're not going to win every league race uh, some races are not going to go your way but it's all about consistent consistency and I think on this game uh, I'm hopefully showing that I am being very very consistent and this race was just a very very good consistent performance we crossed the line to come P1 at Silverstone oh. Oh, against shit. a Five very very open. fast so grid and i have to say this the stream support i had was immense for this race over five thousand people actually watching this so thank you so much for watching this i hope you've been enjoying this game let me know what you want me to see because i'm going to do a lot more tutorials and stuff coming up but i really really appreciate it once again hope you enjoyed the gp this weekend and i will catch you very very soon peace